Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, September 21st, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, Nikkei's up, eh, not a lot, but Hang Sang in Shanghai, down a little bit. Over there in Europe, FTSE's down, but DAC and CAC's up. What else? Markets over here in the States, boop, down a little bit. Oil, bloop, gold, bop. What's going on? Well, you know, yesterday was the big day. The Fed spoke. So, Dow Jones Industrial Average fell for the first time in 10 days. Closing lower even after a small gain. After the opening of trading took the benchmark to a new record high. So they're worried about what the Fed is saying. And that's why gold prices went down. Because you know the story. The higher interest rates go, the stronger the dollar gets, the lower gold. And gold didn't have a good day today, closing at 1290. So it's below that 1300 mark. And you know what we've been saying. Had to go over 1400 to gain strength and didn't make it. So now it's lost about 60 bucks from its high. And oil, where's oil? Well, oil's doing nothing. Oil's waiting tomorrow to hear what they say over there at that OPEC meeting that they're going to have and whether or not they're going to extend their curtailment of production down some 1.8 million barrels per day. So you can bring it on for another year. It looks like they will, but they get more production from other places. And once this hurricane mess cleans up, you're going to start seeing more production coming up online as well. So the prices that you see are the prices that you get. We don't see it changing much from that at all. And what else do we have over here? Ah, Some of the news about the Fed statements yesterday. Fed to unwind crisis era stimulus. Crisis era stimulus. Isn't that a nice name, huh? How about money to enrich the rich and keep the Ponzi scheme going? Because it didn't help we the little, little people. But that's not what they say. The basic message here is the U.S. economy's performance has been good, said Fed Chairwoman Janet Yellen. You ready? The American people should feel the steps we have taken to normalize monetary policy are well justified given the very substantial progress we've seen in the economy. Yeah, hey, 78% of the people in the U.S. are living paycheck to paycheck. It's all in your mind. All those people in Florida and Texas that have no dough to fix their homes and have no insurance, don't worry about it. You have plenty of money. The economy's been great. You know the jobs that were created, folks, by Obama. Yeah, you know how he bragged he created all them jobs. Yep, got to keep his legacy going. What was it? 94% of the jobs, according to the Harvard-Princeton study, were what? Temporary work? Oh, and of course the people are feeling great because... 51% of the people working full-time are earning $30,000 or less. And what else do we have here? The medium projection for the longer run level of interest rates edged down to 2.75% from 3% in June. The median projection. So in other words, they're saying that by 2020, that's what we're going to have. This is no interest rate rise at all in reality. This is a temporary setback for gold. The Ponzi scheme continues. Because if you look at from when they began raising interest rates, it's only, what, 2015, they've raised them some four times. It's no money at all. It's only up to between 1 and 1.25%. And when you adjust inflation into that, you're still well in negative territory. 
The Fed has raised rates by a quarter percentage point four times since late 2015. Officials released their projection of interest rates for 2020 for the first time. And as I said, what they're saying is that many officials see little need to raise rates after 2019 and possibly once in 2020. So there you got it. It's at a critical point because the global economy is not that strong. It's been growing slowly because today the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development urges more private investment to sustain upswings in leading economies. Economic performance is improving in most of the world's leading economies, but is still short of a self-sustaining upswing, according to the OECD. Huh. I guess uh, they're not on the same page with Yellen. Because what do we have? The growth under Trump is as bad as it's been under Obama. Hardly any growth at all, around the 2% mark. Emerging market sovereign debt doubles in a decade. Well, I'm mentioning this because if interest rates go up and the dollar goes stronger, overall the debt pile of emerging market governments has more than doubled over the past decade from $5.2 trillion to an estimated $11.7 trillion as countries have borrowed record sums to plug fiscal gaps. Ah. And what did they borrow that money in? Yeah, dollars. And what happens when the dollar gets stronger? Their currencies get weaker. And they got all this debt that they have to pay back? How are they going to pay it back? So, when you read, again, And what the Wall Street Journal is writing and other newspapers about what the Fed is going to do, there are also questions on how they're going to unwind all of this quantitative easing. How are they going to do it? Here's the answer. Yellen's next step, she is insane. You know why? Because they don't know. They're afraid of it. The facts are here. Again, what did I read on Monday? Rate rises threaten global growth. The Bank of International Settlements chief economist warned that when rates start rising, companies and markets are at risk because central banks' easing has raised bond and equity prices beyond their fundamental value and led some companies to accrue debts or avoid repaying ones amassed in the run-up to the 2008 crash. The risk is that companies now face a debt trap, having built up so much credit when borrowing was cheap, they could struggle to repay when rates rise. This is not going to be smooth sailing. That's why they don't know what to do. And again, what the cheap money does keeps the Ponzi scheme going. Markets keep going up because money is cheap, and so too merger and acquisition activity. Virtually every day I read about a new one, bigger than the one before, or as big as the one before that one. Toshiba's prized chip unit sold for $18 billion dollars to Bain-led tech consortium. Yep. Marking one of the biggest private equity-led buyouts since the end of the financial crisis. Private equity buyouts. Hey, what happened to uh, Toys R Us? Private equity, hedge funds. This stuff never used to exist before. Young people don't know this. This is all new. It's part of the multinational globalization. The few own everything. Eight cats, remember, got more money than half the world's population combined. And in a country near you, it's the same story. And this is why. We, the little people, are nothing more than workers in slave land here. Because 
Tyson Krupp and Tata plan Europe merger. That's right. Tata Steel from India and Germany's Tyson. Savings up to $600 million a year. And the loss of 4,000 jobs. So the bigs get bigger and we keep getting smaller in terms of what we own and how much we are paid. Hey, remember last Friday when that bomb went off? The subway over there in the UK? Yeah, a homemade bomb. Rush hour panic. An injured woman outside the London subway stop hit Friday by a bomb. 29 people were hurt. Were hurt. Look at this photo. Hurt. Hey. This doesn't make the New York Times, what I'm about to read you. doesn't make any of the American media. Don't show photos like that about this. A new report from Air Wars, that's an NGO, estimates that U.S. airstrikes in Raqqa, Syria, last month killed 433 civilians. Yeah, and how many did they wound? And how many homes did they obliterate? But they don't show you that. Not the prostitutes. No, no, no. Ah, but remember what happened when they were trying to get those ISISs out of Aleppo, Syria. Oh, and they were bombing the place, but the Russians were doing that. That was an international war crime. This you don't hear a word about. Nothing. And... Hillary Clinton's still out there shooting a mouth off and the media is still covering it. This is a disgrace like I've never seen in my life and people keep buying it and selling it. It's a bad joke because it all ties back into this. Big story today, again. Lawmakers fear Russia still meddling in U.S. politics. This is the Financial Times. What lawmakers? A bunch of jerks. A bunch of little old life clowns, not one piece of proof, and they're blaming this thing with Facebook where they estimate at least $100,000 worth of, quote, divisive ads on the site between June 2015 and May 2017. That's nothing. Nothing influences nobody. And what did Clinton's campaign spend? Oh, over a billion bucks? Oh, that's different, Salenti. That's only real money. This is all made up. But here's Hitlery out there. Here she goes. She's on the uh, Tonight Show and saying how, quote, painful and, quote, horrible it was to lose the election. Yeah, no kidding. You haven't stopped complaining since. And you were too much of a coward to show up and tell your fans that you lost on election night. That's never been done before by such a cowardly person like you. She declared she's, quote, trying to come to grips as I write in the book about everything from, you know, sexism and misogyny to voter suppression. And the Russians, and the Russians, and then she goes in about the Facebook thing. Not a fact. Nothing. And the media lets her get away with this. And now she's calling herself, you ready for this? Paula Revere. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Putin really doesn't like democracy. He thinks it's an inconvenient, messy policy. Putin built up an army of, quote, fake Americans with fake news and fake stories and fake demonstrations, she wrote. Ah, ousted federal prosecutor, a Trump critic, will join CNN as a, quote, analyst. No, as a prostitute. Why would anybody listen to this clown where you know where he's going to be coming from but that's all the media has become and that's why it's important to 
course, read the Trends Journal, subscribe to our services. It's real news. Because here it goes back to our fall 2016 Trends Journal. Reality champ wins presidential reality show. Here we go. This is why Clinton lost. Misogyny? No, no. In fact, Trump received about the same number of white male votes as did Mitt Romney in 2012. But none of the media is saying that. You know why? Because they hire little prostitutes to put out propaganda. They get paid to put out. And despite Hillary Clinton playing, quote, because misogyny she brings up next, women to be elected president, since she launched her campaign in 2015, she received 2 million fewer votes from women than Obama did in 2012 because they find you so disgusting. Yep. What else do we have here? Also, some 2 million black voters who cast ballots for Obama in 2012 did not cast ballots for Clinton. Overall, Clinton received about 10 million fewer votes than candidate Obama did when he ran in 2008. And the reason why the black people didn't vote for you is because of what your husband did with three strikes you're out and all those uh, nice jails that they privatized so the Clinton Foundation could get ma make money from them in donations that put innocent people who've done little crimes in jail. And a lot of them were African Americans. So there you got it. Still hearing about Hitlery. Well, Paula Revere, no, Paula Revere, get on your little toy horse and ride out of here. We've had enough of you. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.